Hey everyone, this video is going to be all about multiplexers. I'll explain how they work, what they're used for, and then I'll give some practical examples of the neat things you can do with them. The first and most common use is for passing multiple data channels through a single line. In this case, a multiplexer on the transmitter side alternates between several inputs and passes their data to the single output. On the receiver side, a demultiplexer does the opposite job. It receives the single input and alternates between the multiple outputs it sends the data to. The disadvantage of the system is that for any given channel, the data transmission rate gets divided by the number of total data channels. The second use for multiplexers is replacing combinational logic. What that is is any circuit with logic gates that features no feedback loops. In essence, what that means is that the current state of the circuit will in no way influence the next state of it. The first thing I want to point out is that these multiplexers aren't actually what are used to multiplex LED matrices and whatnot. That's a different process. So moving on to an example like this, you see we have a multiplexer with four data inputs, two selector inputs, and a single output. Any multiplexer will have at least two data inputs, one selector input, and always a single output. A curiosity is that the number of data inputs will be 2 to the power of the number of selector inputs. So in this example, we have 2 to the power of two selector inputs will be four data inputs. So let's imagine now that we have 0, 0 on the selector inputs and any state on these uh, data inputs. 0, 0 means that input A will be passed on to the output Y. So whatever state A is at, Y will be 2. Instead of we have 0, 1, the state that's at B will be carried out to the output Y, and so forth for 1, 0, and 1, 1 for the other outputs. Okay, so the first thing I do is give it power, 5 volts obviously. And first thing you can see is I have 8 switches on the left. These are push buttons that control the data inputs. And then on the right side I have 4 little yellow jumper cables. And these control the um, selector inputs. In this case I only need 3 and the fourth one is uh, going to stay low, the first one to the left. That's because uh, 2 to the 4th would be 16 data inputs. So in fact you can see there is 8 data inputs on the top that are not connected. And, and you might have noticed that the output's high even though I'm not pushing any buttons. And that's because this particular IC has an inverter at the output. I don't know why this is the case, but um, apparently they thought it'd be useful. So if I push the first button on the right, which represents um, address 0, let's call them addresses, you can see that controls the output, but all the other buttons don't do anything. When I put the first selector input to 1, this gives an address of 1, and therefore the second button is the one that controls the output. 2, which is a 1, 0, and binary, makes it so that the third push button is the one affecting the output, and so on till the eighth button. Okay, so as a last test, you can see I put the leftmost jumper cable to 1, which gives addresses from 8 to 15, and this makes the output go low. And that's because TTL ICs default to high when the input is not connected. That means that the other 8 data inputs that I haven't connected there at the top are all defaulting to high. And that means because of the inverter that the output will always be low. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, found it informative and somewhat entertaining. As always, if you have questions or any kind of doubt, uh, feel free to write them in the comments and I'll answer them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.